for all of you. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Overmeyer and I am a storyteller in the Asian Art Museum in San Francisco, California. And I'm pleased to introduce our newest Kamishi Bai story, which was commissioned for us by the museum from a local artist, Ting Shui. And it's set in a time in China. This is from a very traditional old story when everyone knew that it was dragons who brought the water. And so from an early age, you were taught never to make an ang a dragon angry because if you did, that dragon might punish you by bringing fierce water magic against you like floods or a drought, or even if you were just a bit annoying, he might punish you with some small water magic like a leak. And the name of this story is The Dragon's Pearl. And the pearl of a dragon was his most precious possession. He kept it always next to him in his pool. Sometimes he hid it for safekeeping in his mouth or he would tuck it under his chin. And that pearl gave him the power to control the water and the rain. Now, one time, in the time of the dragons, there lived a mother and her son on the banks of the river Min. And the mother had worked hard all her life, but she was ill now. And the only one who could hold a job was her young son. And the only job he could find was one that sent him out day after day to cut down grass. And he would cut down that grass. He would throw it over his shoulder. He would bring it into the village and sell it to the villagers. And they would buy it and use it to feed their animals. Now this was a hard job and he did not earn much money. And it got even worse. The summer of the great drought because now the crops and the plants withered, the animals and the humans were thirsty and the boy had to travel longer and longer distances to find some grass until one day he climbed higher than he had ever been and he came across a patch of the most wonderful grass, bright green, tall, he cut it all down, every blade, took it to the village, and the villagers had forgotten that there had ever been such green grass and they gave him more money than they had ever given him before. And you can imagine that the next day, he went back to that same place thinking that he would find maybe another patch, almost as good nearby. But instead he saw it was exactly the same patch. The grass had grown back. If anything, it was even thicker and greener. And so he chopped that down every blade. He took it and sold it. He went back the next day and did the same thing. And the next day, that was wonderful grass. 
it was magical grass. There was only one thing he did not like about that grass. And that was that it was so far from his home. And then he thought, if it was really magical grass, he could plant it by his own house. It clearly needed no rain. And so the next day, he came back with a shovel and he worked and he took every blade of grass out so carefully with all its roots, laid it down gently in the basket, worked all day. And at the end, just before he went home, he ran his hands through the dirt to make sure he hadn't left anything behind. And he suddenly felt something round. He shook the dirt off, he pulled it out, and it was a pearl on with a brilliant light. And he took it home to and showed it to his mother. And they talked about how much money they would get if they sold that pearl. But, and, you know, it was so beautiful. They thought, let's keep it for just a few days so we can look at this beautiful, beautiful thing. And so for safekeeping, his mother put it in the bowl in which they kept their rice. There were only a few grains there, not enough for a meal even. It was perfect for the pearl and she set the lid on top and then the boy went outside and planted the grass and he went to bed right afterwards exhausted. The next morning he jumped up, ran out to see his beautiful grass, but oh, it was withered, it was dry, it was dead. Oh, he burst into tears. They were going to have to sell the pearl that very day. Oh, to cheer himself up, he decided to go look at that pearl again. And you remember where that pearl had been put in the bowl that held the rice. rice. The rice. And he went, and look, the rice was there, but it was overflowing. That bowl, that bowl was so full, the pearl was on top of the rice. He called his mother. Oh, they did not know what to think, but she emptied the rice out of that bowl and then she put the pearl right back inside with the lid on top. And the next day, again, the bowl was full of rice, had pushed the lid off, the rice was overflowing. This time, the mother put the pearl into the box in which they kept their coins, only two coins, they were not rich. The next morning, that box was full of golden coins. And the next day, oh, the mother put the pearl into the jar in which they kept their cooking oil. And the next day, that oil was overflowing the full jar. Well, you can imagine that this changed their life. Using the pearl, they could make whatever they wanted and whatever they did not need, they could sell. The only trouble was the neighbors. They noticed that things had changed, that the family was no longer poor. They wondered about that. And when the mother was out, they surrounded her and asked her so many questions that just to stop them being nosy, she told them about the magical pearl. This was not a good idea because the next day there, they were banging at the door and demanding to be let in. And so in they came 
and the boy held out the magical pearl in his hand. And now they reached their hands out grabbing. They wanted to hold that pearl themselves. And just to keep it safe, the boy put it in his own mouth. And now they reached for him and shook him up and down and up and down by the shoulders until frightened and startled, he swallowed that pearl. Oh. He felt that pearl go down through his throat. It burned all the way down. It, it seemed like a lump of fiery salt. Oh, he was thirsty. He was so thirsty that he picked up the teapot and drank down the teapot. And he was still thirsty. He reached for the water jug and poured glass after glass of water until the jug was empty. He went outside to the well and pulled up bucket after bucket until the well was dry. And he was even thirstier of oh, the river. He ran to the river. He flung himself into the river face down and began to gulp that water down. He gulped and he gulped until the river was dry. And suddenly, a great noise came. There was thunder, there was lightning. The wind swept up and the earth shook. The boy shook too and his mother called out to him, come inside son, come inside. But he could not, something was wrong with his legs. They were growing bigger. He could not move and his hands, look, his hands were like claws and something in his back, something was moving, was pushing out. It was a tail. He was changing into something. He was changing into a dragon, a dragon. Oh. The boy looked, he saw scales on his arms. He felt them on his back. He could feel a long slender neck like that of a snake. And now he knew what to do. He flung his mighty head back and he began to breathe out cloud after cloud. He said the billowing across the sky and as his mother looked those clouds burst and rain came streaming down rain rain the thirsty earth drank it up so much rain that the river was full again. And the boy, who was now a dragon, began to swim away down the river. He knew he had swallowed a dragon's pearl. And he knew he would always be a dragon and would watch over that river men forever. And his mother, she knew that he would never go home with her again. And she cried and waved. But that mother and that boy then began to meet every day. He did not return 
but still they could meet on the banks of the River Min. And that boy worked as hard as a dragon as he had cutting grass. He was careful never to lose the pearl that he had swallowed. He understood that it gave him the tremendous power that only a dragon can know, the power to bring rain. And he used that power wisely. And the rains indeed began to visit again. And from that day on, there was always just enough water in the river men, never too much, never again too little. Great. Good enough, I say good enough. <laughs> so 